And our next stop is the Seaside Ancestral House of Don Carlos Corrales. Okay, we're joined by uh, the host, no? Mr. Fernando Corrales Jr., who is here to share about the history of this house, its relevance and importance in the history of the whole island of Camiguin. How old is the house and how it came about that this beautiful structure was put up in this part of the island of Camiguin? This house is over a hundred years old. I mean, to be exact, it will be 103 this year. 103? Yes. Amazing. And how this came about is, is very interesting. And really on reflection, I mean, I pursued my dreams elsewhere. I left the island when I was young, mm -hmm. and then catered and pursued all my dreams outside of the Philippines. But I got so inspired because I just came back in 2015, and on reflection, how interesting it would be mm -hmm. to reflect and imagine then at that time mm -hmm. how a meeting was. Yeah. Because my grandfather was a young man of 24 when he came to the Philippines after his marriage to a bride of 19 in Binondo, Manila. And they decided to come here in Canadian Island and started a family. Now, the question would be, how, why Canadian Island? Exactly, for a young couple who's based in Luzon, yes. thinking about Mindanao, right? Right. But that's why I said I'm in awe in terms of their sense of adventure. Sense of adventure, that's right. Their sense of imagination. You know, the pioneering spirit. It gives us some romantic feels there. Correct, because then you would think back, because I think you can agree with me that we're privileged, because our life now is easier than what it used to be. So, who is this uh, handsome gentleman in this portrait, sir? He is my grandfather, great -grandfather, great grandfather, great grandfather. He was the one who originated the Corrales clan. So he is named in the Philippines. He is Don Jose Corrales. Don Jose Corrales. He came to the Philippines around about 1840s, 1850s, mm -hmm. appointed by the monarch of Spain at the time, Queen Isabella II, to become a judge of the court of first instance okay. around that time. And at the same time, he became a governador civil in Cagayan de Oro, Miss Amis Oriental. Ah. That's why the affinity to Cabigan That's why he discovered Cabigan. And the island with, uh, with all the Maybe this and island became their uh, playground. <laughs> and if you notice the, the, the medallion, 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 that's actually uh, the, uh, awarded to him because of his achievements in the Philippines wow. and how he approached basically his so um, he's he is from Spain. He's from Spain. He was a widower. So from your your great grandfather and then your grandfather also stayed here. Who else stayed here after after several generations? Because as you mentioned, all of you you did your own adventure out of the island, out of the Philippines, and then who actually stayed here from the family? And uh, it's my uh, my my father. I mean. My grandfather, Don Carlos, has basically 12 children. Okay. Three uh, passed away in their infancy, so there were nine, nine. surviving. My father is the youngest of the family. There were three spinster sisters, uh, Tita Charing, Tita Suling, and Tita Pasing. And then Tita Charing was the one who lived here for a long time. For a long time. I think she was. 98, something like that. She passed. Then she passed. But she was the one who stayed in the house. And so, so, much, was so much love in the house. Yes. Yes. And I think she kept it because uh, she enjoyed probably her childhood here. Because can you imagine running free? Yes. I mean, I, I, I said that, you know, I think that the fifth and sixth generation of your family would want to come back because I think the direction now is also a strong revival on loving the countryside mm -hmm. yeah and, and and looking at areas that uh, that are 
not really isolated, but areas where you can have more peace and more quiet. So, and I always I believe in, in the fact that it's good to look at the past because I went out, now that I came back, looking at the past, it drives me to think that with the past, it will propel you to a better future. Yeah, certainly. Because then you learn a lot. You learn a lot. Of what family values and traditions are, you know. Which is exactly what you're doing. Which is now. Exactly what you're doing. So, like, maybe my last question in this part of the chat is, how do you see the next generations of your family take care of this estate? And I call this an estate. <laughs> I hope that my nieces and nephews uh, in Cebu, uh, the kids have been fun because they, they are the ones really that preserve this and maintaining it, would instill in the next, I mean they are the, and the fourth, they are the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, the eighth, mm -hmm. that it would continue because they honor the wish of the father and the grandfather, my first cousin, Kathleen, that this house cannot be touched, it has to be preserved. And I hope it will continue for all the generations to come and enjoy and be proud of the legacy of the Corrales Kisimbin Wonderful. What a wonderful prayer and I pray with you. Uh, I'm sure your, your nieces and nephews would be listening to you intently. So well, I hope that they would come. And even with COVID, you're not, you're not living side by side with anybody. It's just totally in, in, fact, in, in tune with what they say with nature. Exactly. Post-pandemic, it's all about being out there, being with nature. I'm so passionate about this house. And, and you see it. And we see it. And I can sort of, I'm forever grateful that, that my nieces and nephews, fifth and sixth generations, are really championing the cause to preserve this legacy. I, I stand tall and proud that we have this house here in Canadian. And it will never go away. It's for the future generation to share. Very well said. Thank you. This is... You know, I, news. I also have a copy of this, but I, I, I bought it from an auction. This is the first uh, eruption. The first eruption, yeah, but this 18, is the original copy. This is the original one, yeah? On Canadian Island. 1857, if I'm not mistaken. 1875. 1875. This was in 1871, so, so it was, the it was, news came out four years after. It was world news. It was world news. Yeah, so this is a Pili Pili tree. tree. Pili tree. Pili tree. Yeah, when I was growing up, I mean, I used to enjoy the fruits of this tree because they make marsapan de pile with my uh, pitas here, you know. And this was planted by my grandfather uh, in 1888. 1888. So how old, how old is the tree now? And this year it will be 103. 103? 103. That's why if this tree could talk, ah. it would tell us a lot of things that happened in this... The, the tree uh, can actually life. share the history of your family. That's very <laughs> But wonderful. What you've done here, you will keep... Of course, it's 103 years old. I'm sure you're directed in keeping it for... Yeah, I mean, another hundred. Right? Our family is standing proud like the pili tree. Wonderful. And like sentinels to keep and preserve what we have. Another good symbol. Thank you. Thank you, sir.